Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I am so excited for this May wrap up because I read one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. I read seven books and I'm currently reading two and I've never read this much in a very, very long time. So I'm so excited to talk about all these books and let's just get on with this video. I'll be talking about these books in chronological order. So the first one that I finished in May is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the first book in the, how'd you call this series again? In the Brown Sisters companion novel series because Chloe Brown has two different sisters. I'm so excited to pick up the sequels, but let's first talk about book number one, shall we? This is an adult romance novel in which we follow Chloe Brown. She is chronically ill. I believe her like disease is called fibromyalgia, but I'm not too too sure and I'm definitely not sure on how to pronounce it. <laughs> she is also a computer geek. I believe that she mostly designs websites and when she has like a near-death experience Chloe is like oh my god what have I actually achieved in my life and then she makes a list of things that she definitely wants to do in the near future but then one of the people in her apartment buildings who I believe is like the lieutenant kind of the the caretaker of the whole apartment complex uh Red is gonna help her out with doing those things he's kind of like a bad boy and they might you know have a little romance and I really adored this book. I also listened to the audiobook alongside with it and I could relate a lot to Chloe because I am always very much in my comfort zone and I really want to like go a little bit outside of it but I'm always kind of scared to do so and I really quite loved Red as our love interest. I really really liked this book. It was just fun and easy to get through. I am so excited because I've heard even better things about the second and third book in this series. I love the little like banter between the two of them. It was very funny. I think that Chloe is super sarcastic and overall I had a great time. So I believe I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars and there might be a really fun video collaboration that I did with Story from Storybooks channel here on YouTube as well. I will leave a link to a channel in the description box down below. So definitely keep an eye out for one of her Enneagram videos because your girl might be featured in it. <laughs> Next up, we have one of my new favorite books that I read in 2021. I am so glad I picked it up this month. And it's all because of Brit from Basically Brit because she wanted to do a buddy read for this one and we both kind of suck at buddy reads. So we just kind of kept up with each other like talking about where we were in the story and our thoughts and feelings about it. And that is The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. Wow, is this a heartbreakingly beautiful book. It's stunning. So in this one, we follow twin sisters Desiree and Stella, and they grew up in this very small uh, black community, I believe somewhere in the south of America, in this place called Mellard. But what it says here on the back is that after they were 16 and ran away from the town, it's not just the shape of their daily lives that is different as adults, it's everything, including their racial identities. Desiree lives on her life as a black woman and Stella passes on as a white woman. But then their stories get intertwined via their daughters, which was so interesting to read about. This takes place from like, I believe the 1950s until the 1990s. And you follow the stories of the twin sisters, but also of their daughters. And oh, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so emotional. There are a ton of trigger warnings for this book because it deals a lot with racism and violence from white people against black people, but I will leave the trigger warnings for this book in the description box down below if you want to check them out. It's a very character-driven book. There's not a lot of plot in this, but I loved it so much. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I especially loved Desiree's daughter June and her boyfriend Reese. They were my absolute favorites of this story and it's just gorgeous. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. My words do not do this book any justice. If you've had this on your TBR, please pick it up. The first 100 pages, I really like had to get into it. So that took me a little bit of the time. But once I got into the story, I could not stop reading it. So this one is definitely a five out of five stars for me and one of my new favorites. I cannot wait to check out Britt Bennett's other book, which is called The Mothers. If you have read that one and if it's any good, let me know in the comments down below. 
May, one of my most anticipated releases released. <laughs> and in preparation for that, I reread Heartstopper Volume 3 by Ellis Osman. This graphic novel series follow the boys Nick and Charlie. Charlie is one of the only like openly out gay boys at his school, if I can phrase it like that. And he has the biggest crush on Nick. And when they're in school, they are seated together. But Charlie is very unsure of whether Nick likes boys as well. And this graphic novel series is a lot about trying to figure out your identity as a person, but also your sexuality. It has a lot of LGBTQ representation in it. A ton of the side characters are, for instance, like transgender or bisexual or homosexual. So if you need a graphic novel series that features a lot of that representation, then Heartstopper is the perfect one for that. And this one, Nick and Charlie go to Paris with their school and they're kind of like trying to figure out how to come out as a couple to the rest of their school in their own way at the right time. So that was great to see. And I love rereading this. You fly through these books. And then obviously the one that I was so excited to read in May was Heartstopper Volume 4. And a big trigger warning for eating disorders because Charlie has to deal with that a lot in this book. So this one was a very heavy one to read about because of that topic. But again, I think it's so wonderful and important that Ellis Oseman like shines a light on these topics and talks about it and represents it in her books but also Nick and Charlie's relationship gets a whole lot more deeper and I just I love this series so much it is perfect absolutely perfect so both of these again got a five out of five stars for me I had great ratings great books that I read in May I'm so happy about that then I read another graphic novel. This one is called The Blue Road. If I'm saying that correctly, let me check for you. <laughs> I read this one on script. If you want to, you can use my personal link and we both get an extra month of listening to audiobooks and reading digital books for free together as well. I am not sponsored by them. This is just kind of like their program, what they do. But I really love the surface that script offers. And they had this graphic novel on it. Let me check again the exact name and the authors. Yes, it's called The Blue Road, A Fable of Migration by Wade Con for the text and April de la Noche Milne for the illustrations. This is the story of Lacuna, a girl who is living in like a forest, kind of like made out of ink, and she is traveling to the Northern Kingdom with the help of a Will of the Wisp, if I'm saying that correctly, named Polaris, and you follow her journey to the Northern Kingdom. She has a couple of obstacles that she needs to tackle, and when she arrives at the Northern Kingdom, it's maybe not as beautiful as everyone makes it seem to be. And like the title says, it's a story about migration. And I personally really liked Lacuna as our main character. She is so smart and resourceful. She is a great character, but I did feel like the world and kind of like the magic in this story was a bit vague, but the overall message was great and wonderful. And the art style is so pretty. So I gave it a three out of five stars. The sixth, wow, the sixth book <laughs> that I finished in May is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. In this book, we follow our main character called Felix Love, and his name is super ironic because he has never actually been in love. At the start of this novel, he is going to like a summer school to get into like a very artistic college because Felix is an amazing artist. So I loved that about this story, first of all. But this story focuses a lot on Felix's identity because although he is proud of it, Felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalization too many. He's black, queer, and transgender, and he fears that that is like too much to ever get his own happily ever after. Unfortunately, at like this summer school, Felix get outed by someone and that person like put up photos of Felix before he transitioned and also with his dead name. And Felix comes up with a plan for revenge, but it leads to him kind of getting in this love triangle. It's a story very much about, again, exploring your self identity, your gender identity and your sexuality. So I loved those discussions about that in this book so much and I think they're super, super important. So that part of the story got a five out of five stars from me. However, I wasn't a super big fan of the plot because it focused so much on that love triangle. I didn't enjoy it as much as I maybe can with a love triangle because for me, it was just so obvious as to whom Felix would end up with that I was kind of like, okay, let's, let's get this love triangle over with. It's so obvious that you need to end up with 
bad person. <laughs> so that lessened my enjoyment a bit of the story, but that's not the main focus, the main message that this book wants to convey to you. So I think in the end I gave it a three and a half to a four out of five stars, somewhere between that because it was highly enjoyable and most importantly it had some great messages and I feel like if everyone would read this book the world would be a much better place. And then the seventh and last book that I finished in May is The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alkoff. I read this for the World Readers Book Club that I co-host together with Leonie. This is our May and June pick. This is a middle grade, I think you would say a paranormal, sometimes horror book, which is inspired by Malaysian folklore. And somewhere at the beginning of July, we still need to figure out a date, we'll be doing a live show together with Mali from Kamalia Hasni. She is a booktuber, bookstagrammer, but also an author and a good friend of mine, Kamalia, is the best and she loved this book so much. So we're very excited to be discussing this with her. Our main character, Soraya, kind of inherits a ghost, a pelicid, from her witch grandmother and this pelicid will kind of protect her from all the harm in the world and she becomes friends with this ghost, if I can say it like that. And she calls the ghost pink. They become inseparable, but a pelicid also has a dark side and when Soraya tries to make more friends at school, pink gets a little too defensive. <laughs> because what it says here, Pelicids are not above hurting others to ensure their master's happiness. Pink never knew what true friendship was until he met Soraya. But when Soraya starts making human friends, Pink feels the sting of betrayal and jealousy begins to overtake him. Soon Pink's shadows threaten to consume them both and Soraya and Pink must find enough light to survive before they are lost to the darkness. I loved how this explored the relationship between Pink the Pelicid and Soraya the girl. I definitely enjoyed the first half of this book a bit more because I think around the second half they're kind of like being chased by something and I never really like chasing plots because it makes me feel a little bit anxious, especially the last 10 pages as well. Like I won't be giving away any spoilers, but like the story gets kind of wrapped up, but way too soon in my opinion. And I just wanted to explore more of like the relationship between Soraya and her mother. And that kind of like got wrapped up so quickly at the end, which I thought was kind of a shame, but it was very dark actually for a middle grade, which surprised me. I don't think a lot of people have heard of this middle grade, but I would highly recommend you to pick it up if you love the City of Ghost series by Victoria Schwab. However, this is much more dark and horror-y, so I think this would be a great book to read during like the Halloween, fall times, better so even than City of Ghosts, because I feel like this one is a mild horror paranormal read in contrast to this one, but I think I gave it like a three to a three and a half out of five stars. So those were all the seven books that I finished in May. I think you can definitely say that I had a great reading month. Now let me share with you the two books that I'm currently reading. Now, <clears throat> I'm still currently reading <laughs> The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. I started this one in April, kind of like in preparation to read all of the Grisha first books that I had on my shelf before watching the Netflix show. And then I watched the Netflix show and now I'm still currently reading it. <laughs> so I think I need to read four more of the little fairy tales and I really want to finish this one in June. So let's do that, okay? <laughs> I hate having like a current read on my shelves for like two to three months. Like, let's just finish it, Sabine. Let's do that, okay? And then the other one that I'm currently reading for a very exciting reading vlog, reading challenge type of situation, and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I'm so excited to get more into it. I believe, let's see, I'm on page 82 right now, and I'm liking it. I'm not like loving it. I'm not obsessed with it as much as everyone else is here on booktube, but that might come once I'm further into the story. So in this one, we follow our main character, Linus Baker. He is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth, and he kind of like checks in with Orphan orphanages who have these magical children and to see if everything is still safe and just to check in how everything is going basically. One day he is summoned by the extremely upper management and he is given a very curious, highly classified assignment and he has to travel to this orphanage on a very distant island that has six very dangerous children that might actually bring, how do they phrase this in the synopsis, bring about the end of days. <laughs> Once he gets to the island he also gets to know like 
like the master of the orphanage who is called Arthur Parnassus. And as Linus and Arthur grow closer, Linus discovers the master would do anything to keep the children safe, even if it means the world has to burn. Or worse, his secret comes to light. So the beginning of this book felt to me as if I was watching a Pixar movie. Like I could picture it in my head so well. And I don't know, it's giving me great vibes for some reason, but it is a very slow book. And I usually quite like semi fast paced stories unless I'm super invested in the characters and I'm not yet but I'm only 80 pages into the story. I'm just very curious to see what I'll think of it in the end. So those were all of the nine books, oh my God, that I wanted to talk about with you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about some of these books. If you have read them already, please comment your opinion down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.